Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's September 1st, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market where, for the second week in a row, stocks across the board are up in the world of waste gas and energy. As of September 1st, 2023, Enbridge Incorporated is trading at a volume of 43,729. Waste management is up to a volume of 23,846. Chenier is currently trading at a volume of 11,974. Dominion Energy is at 39,344. And Chevron Core is up to a volume of 98,000 357. But first up in the news, Q Energy is set to demonstrate electricity generation from a closed landfill. The Weber County Economic Development Office has partnered with the leading methane abatement solution provider to deploy their first system in Utah that will convert landfill gas emissions into electricity and heat. Q Energy's PowerGen system is a free piston Stirling engine generator that converts methane from any source, including landfills, into utility-grade electricity. Of the more than 55 landfills in Utah, Weber County has two that are closed but still emitting methane. The partnership was formed as a pilot project for transforming otherwise vented methane into usable electricity. The CEO of Q Energy said, quote, Q Energy is continuing to deploy generators in hard to abate distributed methane sectors such as closed landfills. The Weber County Landfill Project is a great opportunity to deploy the technology in a county in which we operate, end quote. But moving from that, this turned out to be a big week for local headlines, as the Raisin Township in Michigan is now going from four trash haulers to one. Stevens Disposal and Recycling of Petersburg will become the township's sole trash hauler starting October 1st. Residents can expect a bill from the company on a quarterly basis for the amount of $55.50, a $20 reduction from what residents currently pay. Roughly 2,800 of the 3,000 residents in the township already use Stevens as their garbage hauler. A notification will be sent to the other haulers to discontinue their services. Single stream curbside recycling will also be provided. Residents will not have to separate recycled materials, which include glass, plastics, metals, magazine, newspapers, and corrugated products. Residents also will be getting a list of items that can be recycled. Residents will be loaned two 96-gallon trash carts with wheels, one with a black lid for regular garbage and one with a green lid for recycling. Garbage will be collected every week while recyclables will be collected every other week. But moving to Baldwin County, Alabama, the county commission is designing a new facility they are hoping to jumpstart recycling initiatives in South Alabama. The facility will allow local cities to transfer citizens' disposables on site, including paper, aluminum, and cardboard. It will be located at the county's dump site off County Road 64. One of the cities feeling the impact of this project is Daphne. For the last four years, the city has had to transfer its citizens' recyclables outside of the county. Mayor Robin Lejeune said because of this new facility, Daphne can keep its recycling local, which will greatly benefit the city's budget, saying, quote, It's great. It's needed. For the longest time, we have had to take our recycling elsewhere to Pensacola, Mobile, and different places. We've had to pay a very high fee for people to take our recycling. Knowing that Baldwin County is building this new recycling facility saves us from having to pay Pensacola and other places to take our recyclables. End quote. But moving to Connecticut, the town of West Haven now has a choice to make in regards to a possible ordinance change following a trash collection pilot program. Last year, the city accepted $1.3 million in grant money from the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection to launch a citywide pilot program in which residents were encouraged and reminded to separate food waste into a separate bag from the rest of their trash. 
City officials must now determine whether they will change the city's ordinance permanently regarding garbage and refuse in order to codify the program. Residents were given different colored bags, green for food waste and orange for household trash, and have been collected through the city's regular pickup service and taken to a facility where the food waste is transferred to an anaerobic digester and turned into renewable energy. Advocates for the program said the benefit of removing food scraps from the waste stream goes beyond the environmental benefits of reducing emissions from landfills and incinerators. It is also expected to stave off a tax increase as the city's contract for its tipping fees, the amount a municipality pays per tonnage of waste, is due to expire next year and is likely to double. As a cost-saving measure, officials have suggested diverting food scraps from the waste stream in addition to encouraging residents to produce less waste overall. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, industry-leading experts in the field of gas analysis and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com or call them at 321 321- Two two three seven five zero zero. Now on with the news. Moving to Mississippi, the city of Vicksburg just approved multiple solid waste amendments that residents should know about, affecting their fees. According to one of the amendments, residences and small businesses outside the downtown area will pay a fee of sixteen dollars fifty cents per month for twice weekly garbage collection. Residential customers can add an additional can for $25.50 per month, meaning a residential customer could pay up to $42 a month for garbage collection, with the previous fee being $16.95 per can. Residential cans will be green and have the city logo, with additional garbage cans being brown. Small commercial businesses outside the downtown area will use the same cans as residential customers and may request up to three additional cans at $25.50 each per month. Commercial businesses in the downtown area will pay a monthly $40.50 fee for garbage collection four times a week and can have up to four cans at an additional $40.50 each per month. Mayor George Flaggs Jr. said that the city will begin a program to inform residents of the changes using social media, mail-outs, newspaper, and other media. But in Tennessee, before the end of this year, Nashville plans to launch a year-long pilot program where households will be able to collect their food scraps and other organic materials throughout the week and then take them to the curb to have them picked up and composted at no cost. According to a resolution adopted at the Metro Council's last meeting, local landfills are expected to reach capacity in three to five years if additional steps aren't taken. The resolution was in support of a community-wide target of a 50% reduction in food waste by 2030. Zero Waste Program Manager Jen Harmon said, quote, I think we have more and more people in Nashville that want to be more sustainable. Anecdotally, the issues with trash as well, and knowing that landfills are filling up, I think folks recognize that we need to do something different, end quote. Harmon believes this food scraps pickup pilot program could play a large role in hitting the city's goals. And lastly, for residents of Richmond Heights, Ohio, curbside pickup of recyclables may finally be on its way. The city council heard a brief presentation from waste management public sector manager Vince Crawford about the possibility of instituting curbside pickup of recyclables within the community. Waste management is currently in charge of picking up Richmond Heights' garbage at curbside, and currently the township pays $14.93 per household per month for garbage collection. Adding recycling on top of that would increase the cost by $0.58 per month per household, bringing the total to $15.51. Adding the recycling cost would total $44,000 for the entire city for one year, of which they are scheduled to pay $600,000 already for waste collection over the next year, bringing the total to $644,000. At this time, Richmond Heights remains the only Cuyahoga County community that does not collect recyclables curbside. 
And that has been your Recyclist News Update for September 1st, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back here next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.